beautiful Leo friends and welcome to your horoscope for February 2020 and I am looking forward to taking you through what is on the cosmic landscape and up in the cosmos for us this month. Now Leo before we jump in and talk about what's really happening in the month and dig into all the dates I want to cover a couple things that are already in place so that they will set the stage for the way that you're thinking about the energies as they continue to unfold this month. First things first Pay attention to the fact that we've got majority of the planets that you see up here on the chart um, on the western side. So this is our indicator that this is still a month where relationships are really very, very important. They are heavily on your table, which means you're not just doing everything that you want to do, right? It's important to do things in relationship. It's going to be important as we get closer to the end of the month to redefine some of your ideals in relationship, but sure enough, relationships relationships and how you meld and work those things together with other people are still something that is a prominent piece of your thought process. The other thing I want to point out is that Mercury is going to take its retrograde this month and that is very important. It's a significant event for the month, but Mercury is in its shadow period as we come into the month. By the time we're at the second of the month, Mercury's in shadow time, which is basically the same as a Mercury retrograde. So it's not like you have until the 17th to start paying attention to all the retrograde energy. That's when it's official. But what's going to happen is you start to see some of the Mercury retrograde attitudes, motions, and things like that happening as early as the second of the month. So just keep that in mind as well. With Mercury going retrograde, now this is in the general, so hear me, hear me for what I'm saying here. In a general reading, we take the sun sign and put it in the first house because all of the people who have a Leo sun, have a Leo ascending energy, are going to get a taste of this energy. That's why we do this this way. But it also means it'll shift your planets a little bit in a general reading. So in the general reading, right here, Virgo is the ruler of your second house, okay? So this is your money, how you make money, your values, your belief systems, all of that good stuff, your assets lie right there. Now, Virgo is ruled by Mercury. Mercury is going to go retrograde, so it gives us an indicator that your Virgo areas and your Gemini areas are going to slow down financially, okay? And they're going to definitely be areas that need you to look back over them for a time. So... Keep that in mind as we move to this Mercury retrograde, and I'll touch on that as we jump in here. All right, right at the beginning of the month on the 3rd, we have Mercury actually taking this jump out of the energy of Aquarius and moving up into the energy of Pisces where he's going to be doing some of his retrograde time, okay? Now, Mercury is our planet of communications, decision-making, learning, studying. Um, siblings live up here as well. Mercury is very business savvy and he's factual. And he wants facts and dates and times and he wants to get moving with the information, right? Now, he's coming into Pisces, which is an energy that can be kind of vague. It walks between the world it's very watery facts what are those right so it is an energy where mercury is said to be in the state of fall which means he is not at power has not got power behind him at all in this placement because the planet has to get on board getting things done with the characteristic of the sign that it is in. So Mercury, who wants to be factual and zippy with his information, has to slow down and be very Piscean. So it means that logic is not your best friend right now. Your intuition is, your dreams, your visions, this intuitive connection that you have to information is going to be the spice of your life, especially in trying to get things done or moved forward, and better yet, because because the retrograde is going to happen here and getting something cleaned up from the past. Now, what planet in fall doesn't mean it's ineffective. Use your intuition. Use your active, empathetic listening in these areas. This lights up the eighth house space for you, along with Venus and Neptune being up here. The eighth house space is about other people. It's our joint resources, right? Intimacy, sex, finances, taxes, 
fear, death, collaboration, healing, counseling. It's a transformative house, but it definitely has your connection to others. So one of the things that I think of with Mercury being here as well is you're going to really do a lot of listening, right? You're going to have to listen for what's going on, but in a very practical way. Since Mercury is business savvy, and not officially retrograde, but in the shadow time, this is a good time all the way up until the 17th to get the taxes done, um, do the estate planning. If you need to sign up and get yourself into a pattern of counseling for the year or an astrology course, that's a great time to use that energy to do that, okay? On the 7th, we've got Venus being like, thank you very much for your time, but moving into the energy of Aries up top, okay? This is going to light up your ninth house space. Now, Venus in Aries is also not entirely comfortable up there. Venus is about the whole, right? Taking care of everybody. Everybody gets some needs met. It's delicious. It's abundant. There's harmony. Aries is the energy of the I, right? Like, I need this. I want to do this. I want to win, right? Venus doesn't care about winning. She cares about harmony. And Aries is like, mm -mm, no, I'm here to win. Okay, so Venus has got to get on board and act and do things as an Aries. So one of the things I think of with this ninth house is, first of all, wherever Venus goes, she pops in there and makes it magnetic. She makes it beautiful and comfortable and delicious and magnetic to come into. So you could have a relationship show up and maybe it's with somebody you went to school with. Maybe you get a crush on a teacher. Um, perhaps you are traveling or someone is foreign. And foreign can be they speak a different language, they're a different race, they live in a different country. Something very foreign from you. Venus loves to usher in relationships and a little bit of romance. It's all very, very delicious. The other thing I think of with Venus up here is because she is in Aries and this is your travel house, Venus could also be ushering in an opportunity for you to travel with work or you're traveling. It's like passionate travel and there's purpose behind the travel because Aries is not just hanging out for no reason. There's a purpose when he's moving with his energy. And so Venus could bringing, be bringing you some kind of monetary something that has to do with travel. And I want you to keep in mind that travel is a big word. You could be traveling by actually getting on a plane, train, or automobile. You could be traveling by putting a message out there, a message of love, global love, a message of where's your inner warrior. Whatever the message is, you could be doing that by podcast, YouTube, um, blog, publishing, broadcasting, media, all of these things fall into here as well. So this could be an interesting energy for you to dip into. But remember, Venus and Aries can also be quite impulsive. So if a romance does pop up on your scene and it's like love at first sight, I'm not saying don't enjoy that. That is nice. It is delicious to experience something like that. We are human. We have to live for some of this, but just be mindful to take it nice and slow so that you can get all of the details and you're seeing this person, place, or thing for what they really are, okay? All right, on the 9th, we're going to have a full moon, and it's going to be happening in your sign, Leo, so right here in your first house. Now, a full moon happening says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. A shift has got to come to the table, right? Because it's like it has to course correct it a little bit. In your sign, lighting up the first house, one of the things I get this, this thought about for you, Leo, is that this is a lot about identity, it's a lot about identity, how you look, how you've been showing up. This first house is the opposition to this sun that is happening in your seventh house. The sun is alive, bright, and motivated. So relationships are happening quite heavily in your life. And maybe this moon is giving you pause for cause to stop and say, well, how am I showing up in my relationships, right? Um, who are the prominent relationships in my life? Where are the significant relationships in my life? I think that this is also an energy here for you. Truly, it could be something just as easy as you're like, I want to creatively express myself. Leo, you are bold. You are creative. You express. You are very, very original. So the other thing I think of here is even though this sun is in Uranian energy, this full moon may be saying, Leo, where have you been waiting for other people's approval? You don't need that. You don't need that. Do you. Do the original version of you. Say what you need to say. And if in a relationship you need some more independence or you need freedom to travel or to move or to do those things, I think that this moon gives you an opportunity to question what that opposition is that's pulling you between just you 
the me and the we of your relationship. So have an opportunity to take a look at that, okay? On the 16th, we've got Mars moving out of your fifth house energy, and he's going to move up here into the energy of Capricorn lighting up your sixth house. Now, as you can see, this place, this, this is busy. This is busy, right? Like you've been working on this for a while. Your daily routines, freelance work, your health and wellness, being of service to other people, caring for people. That's what's happening in the sixth house. And you've got some of these lessons well underway. Now, as Mars comes in here, first of all, Mars is happy to come into Capricorn. Capricorn wants to achieve and to get things done. Mars wants to do stuff, right? He's very boots on the ground, let's do stuff. So when he comes into Capricorn, Mars is gonna get the tempering, the structure of that Capricorn style of doing things so he can channel his energy into really getting some things done. It's a highly, highly productive energy. So here in the sixth house, one thing I do want to give you as a prominent, uh, not warning, but just be mindful. Mars is coming up here into your sixth house. You could have an abundance of physical energy just zipping and winging and zinging through your body. You're going to want to do something physical to make sure that you expel that excess energy. Because with Mars in the sixth house, what happens is I get all worked up, whether it's mentally I get worked up and attached to something and I'm going and I'm going, I'm going, or I just feel like I have this abundant, good, delicious energy and I don't do anything with it. That is a perfect way to trap energy in your body and that energy will slow down eventually and become sickness. So make sure you're doing your best to be moving, be in action, and use this in a very external kind of way, okay? Now, with Mars up here in your sixth house, what can you get done? Well, like everything, everything you didn't want to get done. Get done all your mundane tasks, right? Oh, yes, laundry still doesn't wash itself, so you maybe need to do that. What are the everyday, daily routine things that you can bring some life and some health and some vitality to that will ultimately help you mature and raise this area of your life to the next level? In your health, do you need to go see a health practitioner? Mars naturally rules your eighth house in the um, generic, in the general zodiac, is this? Do you need to make a connection with a health professional to do some healing, do some counseling, something like that? But certainly, your daily routine will also get very busy. Okay. All right. When we get to the seventeenth of the month, we're going to see Mercury taking that retrograde in Pisces. Now, the retrograde will go between Pisces and Aquarius, but we're going to start here in the Pisces energy. Okay. So Mercury retrograde. When we are in a retrograde of any planet, we're going to re. We're going to redo, rethink, re-edit, reconnect. We're going back over something. With Mercury, it's going to be communication, a thinking, a decision-making, um, writing. Um, maybe something with siblings could come back up to your table. For you, this is in the eighth house where this is happening, okay? So what this is going to give you an opportunity to do is first of all, remember, Mercury is in Pisces and in fall, right? So one of the things that comes up is you might not have enough logic going, right? Like it seems very between the worlds to stop people from squishing on your boundaries. Or maybe that's something you experienced in the past. And now you're having the opportunity to look over that again because you're like, no, this has got, I've got to come into my power. I've got to realize and show people and teach people about my boundaries and my ideals for myself. I do think that because this is the eighth house, there is a potential that an ex-lover could come back or a vision or an idea or a set of lessons around a past lover could come back. This is Pisces energy. It walks between the worlds, right? So it could be something hidden. Did you have... Is this an affair coming to your table? This is the eighth house. There's a lot of sex involved here. There's a lot of transformation. If anything has been hidden with your money or your finances or needed to go back over, you know, did you inherit money this, this year and now you've got to go back and do the paperwork? Whatever it is, Mercury is going to help you walk back through it, bring some things to your table so that you can bring them to culmination. As we get to the 19th, we have this retrograde. We've got Neptune happening up there. And then the sun is going to squish in here as well into this 8th house. So you are motivated to take care of 8th house things. You are motivated to take care of other people's needs. The sun coming in here making you crazy amounts of motivated. And the sun being your ruling planet, first house, right, tells me that what is happening is you will become abundant. 
you will find your way. You will make your money. You will make your identity and your path through helping other people. Put other people, put joint needs first this month and you will make a space and a way for yourself, right? And maybe that's even what this full moon was telling you. Hey, Leo, uh, we can't just travel it on our own. We need to connect with other people, but hold your own while you're doing that, right? So this could be wonderfully good energy here. The sun may also motivate you to do some detoxing if you need to physically or financially, um, even if it's a past relationship that is blown back in with that Mercury retrograde and you're like, we're not good for each other, right? That's something you may be willing to put down as well. On the 20th, here's an interesting aspect I want you to take full advantage of, okay? We're going to have Jupiter, who's down here in your 6th house, coming into a sextile with Neptune, who's up in Pisces in your 8th house. Now, this is, first of all, when the planets have sex, that's good for us because it's a pocket of opportunity, but we will intelligently use it. We're going to be boots on the ground taking kind of action to progress forward. This is an absolutely brilliant energy for progressing forward at a rate of speed that you couldn't do it before. So as these two are sextile to each other, there's an opportunity to move things forward. But what you're going to need to look at is something from your past, a deeper connection, right? This doesn't mean you have to dig back to childhood. If it comes from childhood, fine. Did this happen in 2012? Did this happen in 2019? What is back here in your joint connection, whether it be financial, um, personal healing or a connection to an astrology class or teacher what is back here that you need to look at and see maybe have a communication about and as you look back at it it gives you information to take this area forward was there a connection you had in the past and now you're able to take it on as freelance work right were you trying 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 to get this blog going and you just didn't have the funding and sponsorship is this a connection right? here from your past where there's just some healing and as you release that you free up your mental space your mental health right you allow calm and serenity and quiet to be in your head instead of the daily debate because what happens sometimes leo is we convince ourselves that this like low level anxiety or worry that we have is just normal and it's not it's fear that's what it is so what could you be shedding here as we end this beautiful month you guys on the 23rd we are going to have a new moon happening in the energy up here of Pisces. So we've got a new moon. Now the aspect that comes together when we have a new moon is the sun and the moon are together in conjunction. And when the sun and the moon are together, anything is possible. Absolutely anything is possible. So we plant our seeds of intention to begin something new or something fresh at this particular point in the month. So in this eighth house, I'm asking you in the Pisces energy, what are you praying for? What are you meditating for? What are you manifesting for? Where do you need to spend some time alone and get your life and your ideals together? This is a wonderful aspect that we saw between Jupiter and Neptune for Leo, for you to, to put pen to paper about your ideals. Define your ideals because how can you know if you're living up to your ideals? If you've never defined them, you will never see your growth if you don't know where you're growing to, right? So where do you need some time to maybe sit and be with that? Bring prayer, bring meditation, um, maybe tell somebody in your life, no, you can't have any more of my money, right? This could be a situation that's coming up as well. And I do think with Venus and Aries here, this could be a time in the month as well where you decide to stop hiding, to stop holding back, and really give something or someone your heart. So, whew, I think it's a big, bold, beautiful month. It's February. There's Valentine's happening this month. I'm super pumped about the whole thing. So, I would love to hear how this month goes for you. Where are you progressing? What are these ideals you're going to set for yourself? And what are you manifesting going forward as well? Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I hope you like the setup in the new board. I'm going to keep perfecting the layout, the lighting. I am in a phase of trying something new, so it's kind of weird. So stick with me, keep giving me grace, and we'll just keep learning, growing, and studying together, okay? I love you guys. Bye.